missed calls to the late United States International University of Africa Professor Zakari Mosoti's phone a fortnight ago sent his family into panic. A relative managed to trace the professor and found him in a bedsitter in Gwai, dead. Postmortem examinations revealed that he died of strangulation, which has triggered investigations into his death as his family calls for justice. Gina Kirori has that report. This quaint and intimate bedsitter in Rwai had been the new home of 59-year-old Professor Zakari Mosoti for a couple of months now, away from his original home, not too far away in Acacia, Rwai. The room littered with the basic necessities, tells of a man living by simple means, despite his weighty title of a professor teaching at USIU. It was also the last place he was seen alive. On 10th December, Mosotti was scheduled to visit Kisi for a dowry negotiation ceremony for his niece, but failed to show up. With attempts to reach him being unsuccessful, his family got worried and went to his house to look for him. The 59-year-old was found in his boxers and the shirt he was believed to be wearing dunked in the sink full of water. His insulin pen was also found near his body as well as five blue tablets. The post-mortem examination showing that the cause of death was asphyxia or strangulation due to a neck compression. His first wife Gladys Mosotti says that she had not spoken to him recently following a drift in their marriage when another woman came into the picture who he had been cohabitating with. Initially, it's the same reason why he had actually rented this house, because he was a professor. <coughs> he was doing some online uh, lessons. And back in the house, he was not having the peace that he could be able to give those. Not staying together with Zuri, I was a mistreat in a way. So even when he came to look for this house, he just got this house just to get peace from the house. Mosotti and his first wife were supposed to travel to Kisi together on the day he's reported to have died to iron out their differences. Besides the marital challenges he had been facing, there were also some physical hurdles. He lived with a disability following a nasty fall that saw him break his hips in 2013. Despite treatment, he was mostly dependent on others for support. If you just push him, he will go down and he won't stand up. So I think the culprits made use that criteria of him not being strong. Also found in the Rybed sitter was a bottle of juice with a straw inside. And on the floor, these stickers from a packet of a pair of stockings. Investigative agencies will now be tasked with answering several questions, such as who was at the home of the professor that Friday, who strangled him and left him for dead, and what was their motive? I want to know who killed him because he was somebody who the family depended on. He was the pillar of the family, the spokesperson of the family. The walls of this home are perhaps the only ones that know what truly transpired during the death of the late professor. But the family are resting their hopes that investigative agencies will be able to zero in on the culprits and bring them to book. Gena Kirori, NTV. We say condolences to the family and we'll stay on that story as it develops.